Dear brothers and sisters, greetings in the name of Jesus. In ICF, we are going through the Gospel of Mark with the topic, Only Jesus Gives Hope. And we believe that Jesus can give us hope for this life and also hope for eternity. Gospel of Mark is the first historically gospel, gospel which is written. Mark was assistant of St. Peter, and Mark is the shortest gospel with a lot of action. And the words like immediately, then, uh, uh, it's repeated many times in the Gospel of Mark. Today, we will see two uh, situations where Jesus and apostles were in, described in the Gospel of Mark chapter 6 from the verse 30, to the verse 54. Mark 6, verse 30, to the verse 54. It's occasion when Jesus fed 5,000 people and when Jesus walked on the water during the storm. Let's read the text. The apostles turned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him what God has done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't have a time to eat. So they left by the boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw a huge crowd as he stepped out of the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late, late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away that they can go by near farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they ask? We have done work for months and earned enough money to buy food for all of these people. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked them. Go and find. They came back and reported, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in the groups on the green grass. So they sat down in a groups of 50 or 100. Jesus took the five leaves of bread and two fish, look up to the heaven and bless them. Then breaking the loaves into the pieces, he kept giving the bread to disciples so they could distribute to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples pick up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. Total of 5,000 men and their families were fed from these loaves. Immediately after that, Jesus insisted that his apostles get back into the boat and head across the lake of Bethsida, while he sent the people home, after telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on the land. He saw they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them, but when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in a terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. They went totally amazed, so they still didn't understand the significance of the miracles of the little bread and feeding 5,000 people because their heart were too hard to take it in. We see these two wonderful explanations, two stories, and we see three things, how Jesus can give a hope today to us. First thing, we see Jesus is giving a hope to the people in this situation and today to us through his compassion and leadership. We see the text that the disciples went to the mission trip. And then when they came back, 
They were sharing what God has done and Jesus wanted for them to rest. They were so tired. <clears throat> they had a st so strong ministry that they didn't have a time where they can get rest and eat. And I, this is one small principle here that all of us, we need to have a regular rest. We need to eat regularly. We need to charge our batteries because sooner and later we'll be in trouble. Burnout is the modern problem and modern sickness of 21st century. Jesus and his apostles usually took rest. They were in solitary place. They were in a place where nobody could approach to them. And I think some of us and most of us, we need to find a time where we can be alone with God, when we can rest, when we can eat and we can charge our batteries. We see that Jesus went into the boat with apostles. They wanted to cross to another place, but people came there. And uh, what is amazing about Jesus here is he is a good shepherd. He didn't say, sorry, people, this is not in my planner. Sorry, people, I cannot help you. I cannot teach you anymore. He saw them and he had a full of compassion because they were like a sheep without shepherd. They were go going around without direction. And we can see that Jesus gives hope to people today, to us today, by his compassion and his leadership. He showed that he is a good shepherd. He received them, and the text say he immediately started to teach them many things. He was teaching them the truth. And I think this is a very important thing that we can see, that uh, today, a lot of people around ourselves, we can see that our societies, they're like a shepherd, sheep without shepherd. People are don't know where to go, in which direction they can, they can invest their life, where to find the hope in hard situation. And they need a good shepherd. They need Jesus. They need his teachings. And finding good direction is to listen and observe and accept teachings of Jesus, teaching of truth. Showing a good leadership is when we are teaching the truth from the gospel to other people. If you want to find a good direction, we need to listen to Jesus. We need to listen to the word of God. We need to teach people the truth. And I think this is a very, very important thing. Jesus had a broken heart for people. And let's pray that in the next coming days and months, that we can have a similar broken heart for people around ourselves. When we see people around ourselves, do we see that they are lost? Do we see that they lost direction? Do we have a broken heart for them? Because out of that compassion, we will show them love. Out of that compassion, we will teach them the truth. We will be willing to show them where they can find Jesus' words. We can see that Jesus gives hope through the compassion and through the, his leadership. And not only that he's providing them spiritual food, later he provides them a physical food as well. In many occasions, Jesus took care for their holistic well-being. He is providing a food. He is interesting in their daily needs, but also he has a compassion. He is doing that because he loves them. And sometimes in my life, I'm so, I have a lot of compassion about myself, my family, but sometimes when I'm too much focusing on myself, I don't see the needs of the people around ourselves. I don't see the people that they are lost. And I don't see the need that I need to teach them the truth uh, about God, about salvation, about the good news of Jesus Christ. First thing that I see here from this text is that Jesus he has a broken heart for people. And that's the reason why he came with this earth, to die on a cross for our sins, to give us a hope to give us a new life, to give us eternal life. Second thing that we can see that Jesus gave hope to people because he provided and blessed them. And uh, in this text, we see that Jesus did uh, the miracle. He materialized a lot of food for 5,000 people. Some people say this was the first fast food place, restaurant in the world where Jesus fed 5,000 people. It was a huge, huge miracle. And, and we can see that Jesus is like a picture or symbol of bread of life, of manna. He said in the Gospel of John that he is bread of life. He is that manna which is coming from, from heaven. In Old Testament, 
God provided for the people of Israel in the desert for 40 years bread from heaven through the miraculous way. And that is a wonderful symbol of Jesus Christ. He is the spiritual bread for us. He can give us uh, that spiritual food that we need for our life. Also, God, uh, one of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, God who is care, God who is providing. And we can see that uh, Jesus here is providing for people food. He's interesting in their daily, daily needs. After teaching, uh, he said to his apostles, uh, please give them a food. They said, to, uh, they said to Jesus, sorry, the maxis will be closed. We cannot buy the food for them. And, and Jesus said, what do you have? And they said, oh, we have some money for eight months of salary, but they cannot help to people to buy food. And then he said, what do you have from the food? And they said, we only have a two fish and five bread. And what everything they had, with the maximum what they have, even that looks very small, Jesus took that fish and that bread, prayed to God, look up to heaven, and there was enough food for 5,000 people. There is an important principle here. God wants from us that we can give him everything, every talent, every minute, everything what you have. You need to give into the God's hand. If, the, if even that is, you think this is small what you give to God, you give the best and God will bless with the rest. God will bless and give the rest. When, when, you give, when we give to God what we have in his hands, God can move and bless that for the blessing for others. Sometimes it's very important to understand that we need to give God our talents, our time, everything what we have, and that we can move back. Move back that God can take that and bless and use and develop for his kingdom and his purposes. Amen? How many times we, we, we said to God, we have only this small talent and God is using your talent and many are blessed and your talent is developed and you receive other talents that you can serve God and uh, that you can be a blessing to others. God, give God your best and he will do the rest. Your small contribution, your all contribution is maybe from another side very small, but in God's hands is enough and can be a huge blessing for you and for others around yourself. When God did this, when Jesus did the miracle, they have even 12 a basket of food and fish left as a leftover. That's a signal and symbol that not God is only providing, but also his blessing. And I know a lot of people in my life and I know a lot of people who are not still alive, who are, who are dead, but they are still, we are eating, uh, we are receiving the blessing from their work. When we read some good book, when we are uh, re listening some sermons of the people who used to live here, we still are laying on or, 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 or depending on, on the spiritual blessings of these heroes of faith who lived one generation before us. May God bless you and me that we can understand that God wants to provide everything for us. But we need to give our life, everything we need to put into his hands. And he will use that. And there can be an extra blessing, blessing for the coming years and coming months. When we are working with people, with students, with other people, we never know how our ministry can be a blessing, not only for these people, but how they can be the blessing for others in the next decades and next years. Jesus gives hope to us through compassion and great leadership. He is the good shepherd. Jesus gives hope through provision and blessing. He, want, he is Jehovah Jireh. He wants to bless you and he wants to use your five bread and two fishes for blessings of others. And third thing, Jesus, and I like this uh, chapter, Jesus gives hope to us through his presence and encouragement in the midst of the storms. We can see in this text uh, that Jesus insisted that his disciples go into the boat. Jesus knew that they would go into the storm. But that storm was very important for uh, Christ's disciples. We can, we can read at the end of this chapter, they he had a heavy heart. They didn't believe. Uh, they didn't understand what Jesus did when he materialized food for 5,000 people. And sometimes storms of life, all of us, we are in some storms. 
All of us, we used to be, or we will be in some storms of life. Some storms of life sometimes are good for our spiritual life. And we can be stronger, and we can trust God more, and we can have a beautiful and, and true picture about who is God, who is Jesus in these storms. We can see in this chapter 3 that Jesus is coming into the storm, walking on water to give a peace, to give with his present encouragement for apostles who are in trouble. How many times in your life God came into the storm of your life and give you a peace and give you his presence? How many times we felt that he is with us in hard situations? Apostles, they needed to go through this storm. Jesus insists them and send them. And then in the middle of the night, after seven hours of their trying to rowing and the wind was going against them, Jesus saw that they are in trouble. Although they were five kilometers, he couldn't see that with the physical eyes, but Jesus was God and he knew that they are in trouble. Sometimes we are asking God, God, where are you in this storm? God, see that you are in a storm. God, see your struggle. God is coming to give you salvation with his presence and encouragement that you can go through these storms easily in life. And Jesus saw that they are in the storm. The wind was against them. How many times in ministry? How many times in life? You wanted to do something good. There is a lot of opposite winds coming against you. How many times? How many times I go through situations like that? And then Jesus gave me strength and encouragement and calm the storm that I can go easy through this situation. You, these, these people were fishermen. They knew how to do things. But these storms, they were in trouble. They were afraid. And Jesus is coming on the wave, walking on the water. He's coming through the problems. He's coming. The waves were the biggest problem for apostles in this situation. Jesus is over top of the problems. He's all, over the, 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 these waves. He's walking to them. And they see and they got afraid. They think it's a ghost. They think maybe it's a demon. They think it's something else. But Jesus say, don't be afraid. Be courageous. I am. I am. And he's using the phrase, which in Old Testament, they use about God. And when Moses asked in a burning bush, who are you? I am. I am. God answered him, I am who I am. I am. Jehovah, Yahweh, Yehovah. I am. And in the Gospel of John, this six times is mentioned these statements, I am the light, I am the door. But in, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus wants to communicate to them. I'm not only political leader. I'm not only the doctor. I am eternal God. I am a, a visible God, a visible person who is presenting invisible God on earth. Jesus wanted that in the midst of that storm that they can understand who is he? In the midst of our problems, in the midst of corona situation, in the midst of different challenges that we are going through life, God will open our eyes to understand who is God, who is Jesus, and that we can depend on him, that we can trust him, that we can put faith in him, because we know that he is present to us, he's coming to us. And I want to encourage you this morning, don't panic, don't be afraid. God is watching you. God knows that you are going through hard situation and his presence is with you. He tells you, don't be afraid. I am. I am the God of, of, of history. I am the God of presence. I am of God of future. I am in control of everything. And on the end of the, this, this passage, he said uh, that he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. They were totally amazed. So they didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the bread and fish, because their hearts were too hard to take it, to believe in that. Sometimes in a Christian life, we just like to go to nice conferences, to enjoy the life, uh, to get benefits from the following of Jesus. But sometimes Christian life is to go through the storms. We will have troubles. We will have persecution. We will have rejection. We will have problems because we are living in a fallen world. And these storms of life, are also huge blessings for us because our faith became strong and our spiritual muscles became strong and our vision and picture about who is God and who is Jesus became more clear. Jesus wants to give us hope today. 
He gave us that through compassion and leadership. We need to listen to Him. We need to follow Him. We need to ask and uh, for advices from the Gospels, from the Bible, about different issues. We need to follow Him because He is the best leader. He is the leader who has compassion. He is the leader who sacrificed Himself for the people, not opposite like today politicians and other leaders are doing, sacrificing people because of themselves. Jesus is a loving God. Jesus is a loving Savior. And He has compassion. And He wants to teach us. He wants to direct us and lead us into life. Accept Him into your heart. Also, Jesus is giving uh, uh, hope to us through provision and blessing. He is interesting of every need of our life. He is Jehovah Jireh. He cares for you and me. But also He wants us to contribute what we have. That He can use that and bless others with the talents and gifts that He entrusted you. Use your garden, bring your five bread and two fish into, your, into His hands and you will see the miracles. And the third thing, through the storms and the problems in life, with His presence, He wants to encourage you. That you understand that He is eternal God. God in flesh. He was here 2,000 years ago. He is through the Holy Spirit present in your life. And He tells you, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. Because I am God who is I am. I'm in control of everything. In the midst of the storm, I'm coming to help you, to share the problems with you, to take the problems from, from you. And then I can help you that you can go through this storm of your life. Sometimes we don't want storms. But sometimes we need to understand the storms are very important for our spiritual maturity and for our strong faith that we can help others with God's help. May God bless us that in next week that we can understand and that we can have a broken heart like Jesus for other people around ourselves and we can point them to Jesus. Let us God help us next week that we can bring him all of areas of our life and God will bless and use us for his kingdom and his glory. And let's help us, let's help next week that whenever we are going through the storms, that we can understand and fully trust him because he can provide and help us to go through the storms of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this text. Thank you that you sent Jesus who is full of compassion and thank you, Lord, that, uh, that uh, his broken heart for people who are lost are a great example that we can have the same similar heart. Give us broken heart for the people ourselves, that we can love them and show them the way, that we can teach them, and that we can give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us, God, that we can bring everything what we have in front of you and that uh, our small contribution, all contribution, can be a huge blessing and miracle in your hands. Bless everything what we are doing and use everything what we are preaching and teaching and serving for the, your glory and your honor. And can God help us in the midst of the storms, problems that we can understand, that we will not panicking, that we can just put, put trust in you and know that you are with us in the midst of the storms. We are praying this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.